Hello and welcome to the You Know How to Live show. My name is Kate Hammer and today we will have with us TJ Therian. TJ is a social media based comedian and content creator. He leads with family and birth order humor, producing skits viewed and shared by millions of people on Instagram and TikTok. TJ also leads a creative team at one of the largest churches in America. Plus, he serves as a longtime bat boy for the Minnesota Twins baseball team. Now, wherever you are listening or watching from, I am so glad that you tuned in and are hanging out. I hope you are ready for my favorite combination of things, hopefully a bit of entertainment, and of course, takeaways on how to improve how you work and play and do everything you do in between. Please take a moment now to subscribe, follow, leave a comment, or give a five-star review so that we can stay connected. And with that, let's bring in TJ Therian. TJ! Hey, Kate! How's it going? It's going great. And hey, not to sidetrack us right out of the gate, but I love the intro video that you had, and I couldn't help but notice we share the same Yeti mug. I mean, how so can cheers you go to wrong? You. Anyway. It's a classic navy blue, you know? It, it's really on brand for you, for sure. Yeah. Just a great <laughs> mug. It is. Doesn't affect the temperature of your hand, assures <laughs> the temperature of the inner contents. You know how to live, you know. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. I love how you're just jumping into the whole vibe right out of the gate. Um, so TJ, I've known you for a while. I imagine that some people who are listening will feel the same way that they've known you for a while because of the way that you engage on social media. But for anyone who does not, would you share with us a little bit about your presence on Instagram and TikTok, the type of humor that you offer and why? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, why? I don't yeah. know. I might need a therapist to uncover the why behind it. No. <laughs> I started making TikTok videos as a creative outlet over a year ago and just good, clean, funny deals about parenting and having kids. Mm -hmm. um, and then I started to really dig into birth order and I made some birth order videos highlighting the differences between firstborns, middle children and youngest children, because I find that stuff fascinating. And I watch my own kids and they're just all so different and amazing in their own ways. But so I started making videos about birth order and people really seem to start resonating with it. So mm -hmm. over the last year, as you know, I've been cranking out so many and having a blast, um, making a lot of videos on TikTok and on Instagram. Um, and now I'm just trying to, to keep it going because I'm having a blast. Uh, it's so fun to hear from other parents who relate to them. And short form video is a ton of yeah. fun. And it's not super taxing. So that's what I've been doing. Yeah. So you did this, you know. You wanted to just try a thing, right? You're like, I think this would be funny. I'm going to share this with the world a little bit, see what happens. It's hilarious because when I first got on TikTok, my assumption mm -hmm. about TikTok was that it's full of young people who are going to reject me. They're not going <laughs> to like me. And uh, so I kind of, I kind of slowly got in and started, you know, watched some videos like, okay, I think I can, I think I can hang here. And I start putting videos out. And then the beautiful thing about TikTok is that it finds your audience for you. So somehow the I started to realize like, oh, there's a lot of people like us. It's not just all young people. Um, not that we're not young. Uh, but yeah, I kind of just started trying trying it. And you, you, we've gotten to know each other pretty well. Like I'm one to have an idea and then just do it and pursue it. Um, I try not to get bogged down with, the how, but I just want to kind of get my feet wet, which once in a while might backfire, but I would say more times than not, it's just good to do it. <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, but yeah, I've got, I got my feet wet and I found some momentum. I found a niche and then I just kind of focused in and parenting humor has been my thing. Yes, 100%. And as you mentioned, it's really resonated for people so much so that 
in addition to consuming your content, watching these skits that you create, these hilarious TikToks and reels, they have been sharing their personal experiences with you. So can you kind of tell me a little bit about this phenomenon of receiving content from the other side, parents sending you what they're filming yeah. of their kids? It was the wildest thing. One one day after a couple of months of making these videos, somebody sent me an idea based on their own house. They were like, hey, you're not going to believe this. My firstborn did this. My middle child did this. My youngest child did this. And they're like, you should totally make a video like that. And I'm like, I will because I, I need more ideas. And it was perfect. And I made that that video. I don't remember what it was. But then it started to become a normal thing where parents would send mm -hmm. me ideas based on what was happening in their homes. And then kids started sending me ideas, which was even cooler. Like that was so wild to get ideas from kids on, on birth order videos. Um, and, and then it kind of grew into on Instagram. What's really cool is, uh, the community that can form on Instagram, you know, when people tag you in a story or, or mm -hmm. that kind of a thing, um, people started posting pictures or videos of their families and then tagging, tagging me and I could reshare. So all, all, at, all of a sudden, like what I thought was uh, unique to my house with my kids and making videos about them suddenly became this humongous community of parents. And we're all looking at each other on, on social media, like, Oh my goodness, we're more similar than we're not. Uh, yeah. and every kid is unique, but, uh, one special thing that just to kind of, uh, highlight, you know, the similarities yet we're so different. A mom from the Caribbean reached out to me and had three boys and here i'm a i'm a dad who lives in minnesota very norwegian like and here's a mom in the caribbean <laughs> with three so like our our lives probably don't look a ton the same however she reached out and said my goodness i can't tell you how much i relate to your videos and what a cool mm -hmm. way to bring people together from completely different parts of the world um so it's a pretty special thing for me too to be a part of yeah, absolutely. And what a fun realization in real time, because it's not like you sat there and we're brainstorming a list of, oh, what could I do that will resonate with people? You know, I think sometimes when we're kind of brainstorming, like uh, whether it's for a business or for a hobby or for a way to get out there, we're like thinking through what is going to happen and what are the possibilities for you? It was more just like, I want to do this. And it just worked. And you were able to uncover that not only does this work, like it actually makes people feel really happy, really seen. Um, and it has become like this family activity even. So not only are, you know, the reason why kids are sending you their ideas is because they're watching your videos with their parents. Right. So like you're yeah, creating a family experience. It blows people. my mind. I, it blows my mind. And it's, I personally, it's, it's actually really fulfilling, which for whatever reason, it's really fulfilling to know that, um, and anybody can do anybody, everybody creates in some fashion. Right. Mm -hmm. And I happen to make these videos that when families will watch them together or kids laugh, and you know, one of one of the things with my videos is everything is family friendly. So I'll never do anything that will shock a kid or be crude humor, like that kind of a thing. And there's plenty of that out there. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's really special for me and really fulfilling to know that families enjoy watching my videos. And to take it a step further, I think it's not because of me. I actually think it's because they are seeing their own family in mm -hmm. this piece of content. And that's, that's why they relate to it. They love it. They share it. And again, it's actually more about them than it is about me, which is kind of a special thing. It takes me out of the spotlight, I guess, in my mind. Yeah, absolutely. One favorite activity seems to be when people will send you a video and ask you to evaluate which uh, which child is this of mine? Is this the oldest, middle, or youngest child? And they'll be doing some sort of thing that is true to the nature of that birth order. Um, how has that led to how you see youngest children, middle children, oldest oldest children? Like, 
what, how would you describe any of those three or all of those three learning what you've learned over the last year or so? Yeah. Well, the asterisk on this is that every child is unique and different and yeah. I would hate to stereotype anybody, but let's go ahead and stereotype them. I think a firstborn is very much a rule follower, want to do things the right way. We're not going to cut corners. We're going to take our time. You know, there. if you look on the wall at the art projects, those are the ones that uh, we're coloring in between the lines, not past mm. the lines. Mm. Uh, they are the ones that might tend to say please or thank you a little bit more, not that the others would, <laughs> wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, more the rule followers. The middle children, it, it's just so funny because parents all the time, have their first child. And from a parenting perspective, like you are following the rules, like you've read the books, you've listened to the podcast. You, you're like, okay, I've, I'm learning how to be a parent and we're going to stick to the routines. We're going to put the kid to bed at the same time, napping, feeding everything. Mm -hmm. And and maybe that influences why the firstborn becomes a little bit more regimented too, because like they were parented that way. Yeah. Then the middle child comes and when that middle child becomes maybe two or three, that second born, a lot of parents are like, what am I doing wrong? What is wrong with this child? This child is nothing like the first born. The first born was great. It was perfect. This one won't sleep. This one won't listen. This one is like digging for snacks all the time. <laughs> yes, and definitely digging for snacks all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Our middle child is just so fun and adventurous and, and goofy and motivated, motivated by things completely different than the firstborn. The firstborn likes to know what the plan is. The middle child doesn't want there to be any plans. Mm. She, she just wants to like do whatever, whenever she wants. Yeah. Uh, so that's unique. Then as the parents start to grow tired, a lot of parents have a third child and this might be the youngest if it's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> and from a parenting perspective, you're starting to relax a little bit. You're starting to realize like, okay, I got this. We're And, and you're busy too. Like you're dividing and conquering as parents and mm -hmm. your attention is everywhere. You don't have the energy to fight the battles with the third child that you did with the first child. Mm -hmm. And now we're breaking rules and we're letting things go. And we're like, well, okay, you're not going to eat that for dinner. What can I make you? What are you going to eat? You know, when do you, okay, we don't have to go to bed yet. So you start breaking these rules and then the youngest being the youngest, the lowest, yeah. the lowest on the totem pole, mm -hmm. they have older siblings. So the cards are stacked against them. So while they're also being parented in a more relaxed way, mm -hmm. uh, they're also fighting for their territory. And the youngest, interestingly, have a conviction about them in a passion that, that is really unique. Mm -hmm. Um, and I would say it might have something to do with the birth order, but it's fascinating. It's really fascinating stuff to me. Yeah, absolutely. I think one thing that I really appreciate about the way you explain, uh, birth order is that you don't just go for the negative. You have a lot of, uh, compassion for each child and, and how, even the things that they do that we might think of as negative or problematic, um, that there's actually like a bright side to even those things. So for example, the middle child, if they're just all over the place and flailing and being nuts, that they also have this ability to like bring magic and fun and possibility and wonder to the mix as well. So I really enjoy how you're able to show both sides of the coin and not just like dig in on the negative because humor can go there often. Um, it's easy, but you don't stay there. And that's fun to me. Yeah, And that's like a fear that I have is because a lot of kids do watch my videos. A fear I have is like a six year old middle child is going to watch my videos and start to subconsciously think, oh, that's who I am. That's who I am. That's who I'm supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And almost like a false identity. Like I don't, so I try not to, yeah, I don't want to get negative. And also you're a youngest child. Is that right? You got it. Up to, so you, of course you're going to enjoy the fact that I don't make you look too bad. Right. <laughs> I, do, I do. Yes, absolutely. You are talking about birth order a lot in your social media accounts. 
You also talk about it in a podcast that you've had going on for the past couple of months, maybe even longer now. What is this podcast? Who hosts it with you? And what else is it about outside of birth order? Uh, yeah, we started, me and my wife, Melissa, started a podcast called The Funny Thing About Parenting. And we have 30 some episodes now. We do one a week. And we are, are the identity of the podcast, we didn't have it right out of the gate, honestly. We were, we knew that we just wanted to muse on parenting from a lighthearted perspective. There's a lot of great, mm -hmm. really helpful and in, in, in informative um, parenting podcasts out there. And we didn't think that was really our lane as much as um, maybe a, a more relaxed, entertaining side of parenting. And with kind of the shadow mission of helping parents who feel like their house is crazy, helping yeah. them feel more normal <laughs> and like, Hey, it's okay. And then, and then through mixing in some helpful tips that we've learned along the way, we have four kids. Um, so we, we're, we are not experts in parenting, but over the last you know decade, we've been learning different things along the way. Yeah. Uh, so that's what it's about. And my wife, Melissa hates hearing her own voice and doing the podcast. And so what I do is I don't put any pressure on her. I surprise her every week with what the content is, which actually terrifies her. Yeah. I was going to say, I don't, I don't know if that actually takes the pressure off, but I mean, I guess it's like, however you see it, right? Like if you so every week, she says, we need to plan this out better. TJ. I say, Alyssa, I'm a middle child. I don't, I don't know if I can, I need help with planning. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, you got to do what feels natural for you when you're recording something because gosh, if you're somebody who doesn't work well on script, then that would come off as like super robotic and uncomfortable and no one wants yeah, to listen we don't, to that anyways. <laughs> we don't try to cover too much ground, but we do, we did, we talk about different topics like, Hey, our, when our kids get in a fight with each other, mm -hmm. how do we, how, how do we handle that? And what, what's working and what's not working? Um, uh, when we see neighbor friends starting to get phones for their kids at a, at a, what we would think is a younger age than maybe we're comfortable with. How are we going to deal with that? And what are we, what are we learning from other parents? So we're trying to uh, just talk about what we're experiencing and it's probably aimed more for younger parents. Um, but yeah, we're really enjoying it. It's been kind of a fun side project. Yes. Awesome. So if you haven't checked it out yet, the funny thing about parenting. We'll make sure we throw a link in the show notes for anyone who wants to give it a listen. Awesome. Thanks, Kate. Yeah. So TJ, we're talking about what you do on social media, the podcast that you have out. You know, I also know you have a full-time job and a really fun little side hustle job that we'll have to talk about too. Uh <laughs> So let's, let's tell people, okay, well, actually like, what is this full-time job that you have? What's this other little thing that I'm hinting toward? And then we'll kind of get into how do you make that all happen? Because like you said, you have four children. This is kind of a lot. So I'm going to ask you a little bit about your habits and mm -hmm. your morning routine. But, but for anyone who isn't aware, TJ, can you tell us about what do you do during your nine to five? What do I do? My nine to five. So over the last 13 years, I have been on staff at a church in the Twin Cities. It's a multi-site church, and I lead a creative team. Uh, so we do a lot of video work and some graphic design and motion design. I lead that team, um, and I call them storytellers. And we find different stories happening within the community, within the church, that are inspi inspiring, and we do some funny things, too, to kind of lighten up church because it all doesn't have to be so serious all the time. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I love what I do. So I've been there for, for a long time. My side hustle, which yes. I've also been doing for oh. like a decade, um, <laughs> the nine-year-old version of me would, would have its mind blown knowing that I have this part-time job. But I am a ball boy for the Minnesota Twins, which means during the games, I'm one of those guys sitting on a stool down the foul line with a helmet on and a glove on. And I chase down fall balls and throw them to the crowd. <laughs> Way too fun. It's I don't know how you work this out, but this is fantastic. Yeah. And I used to do a lot more games. Once we started having kids, I've, I've scaled back quite a bit and I'm, I'm pretty selective with the amount that I work. I've had to scale back. 
Um, and over the last year doing a lot of, uh, videos on social media, which actually is mm -hmm. a lot more work than I ever thought it would be. Ooh. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, I'm really busy and we have four kids who are in the thick of it with sports nine and under. Um, yeah, you do lot. lots of coaching, right? And some coaching. So mm -hmm. there's a lot to juggle for sure. <laughs> yeah, there is, but you do all of these things because you love it, right? You know, I like do, you and find a way. I do, and I also I, I'm really big at knowing what's most important, mm. and then knowing what's second most important, and then um, kind of like a bullseye. Like I see my family in the middle of my bullseye, um, mm -hmm. so I don't as much as possible. I want to prioritize and schedule first that middle of the bullseye. And for me, that's, that's my family. Um, and then after that, when it comes to work, I have a full-time job that I'm committed to. I have yeah. a side hustle in social media, which is becoming more than, more than a side hustle. It's become a, a, an additional full-time job. Um, and then I have these other things that I do too. Um, so I guess I say no to a lot of things or I, mm -hmm. you know, um, because I, what I don't want to do is burn myself out or mm -hmm. starting giving my family the leftovers of my burnt mm -hmm. out life. Um, so I try yeah. to be as selective as I can. Yeah, absolutely. So in order to get your day off on the right foot, what does an ideal morning look like for you? I think there's a lot of curiosity around how someone who's able to juggle a variety of things such as yourself, how what that morning looks like, because I think we have this in our imagination that someone who's doing all of the things has a serious morning routine. What's yours look like? like tell, walk us through. Okay. This is called me time. Yeah. This is me time. <laughs> Every parent needs the me time. Okay. It has been my goal for several years to get a little me time when I wake up. Um, what I do, I do like the same exact, you follow me around, my muscle movements are the exact, they're identical for the first two hours of my day. And then I don't try to be a robot, but it's just like, I stick to what works. I don't have to think about it. I just go, um, right when I wake up, I chug a bunch of water and then I go for a, a run. How, how far do I run? You ask 2.8 miles. Precisely. Precisely 2.8. Why do you run 2.8 miles? Well, last year I ran 2.7 miles every day. Mm -hmm. And the year before that, it was 2.5 miles. It's my goal every year to run more miles in one year than I did the year before. Mm -hmm. But I also don't want to spend 45 minutes running. So I like just incrementally try to beat my goal. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, I make, then the kids are getting up and after I go on my run and I love the morning time with the family, making breakfast uh, and seeing the kids before they go off to school. And then after that, my routine is over and we're just in the thick of it. Every day is a little bit different. Yeah. Although even part of your routine before the kids are gone, don't you do a, don't you have like some sort of tradition of making smoothies for you and for your wife? I do. Yes. I have, we may, I make a protein shake with the same exact ingredients every single day. Yeah. I've got it down to a science. I am the most efficient protein shake maker <laughs> in the Twin Cities. I promise you. Oh, wait. So then I have to ask, do you make both in the same blender and then just pour out your serving and hers? Or do you make I, yours and then make Melissa's? Or how does this all work? Kate, mm -hmm. I make Melissa's first. and then Oh, wow. Then. You guys. Ladies first. <laughs> okay. Well, it's also because if I made mine first, I would be tempted to just walk away at that point. So it's kind of like myself holding myself accountable Yeah. to make her breakfast. It's the accountability shake <laughs> method. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what I do. Yeah. Some would call it boring. I would call it, uh, it helps my mental health. Just it's, it's a way to get myself right. And, and I take some time too. I try to read for 15 to 20 minutes in the morning, you know, as the kids are waking up, that kind of a thing too. Yeah. Yeah. I love actually this element of not requiring any decision-making. I think Many of us who have spent some time in adulthood realize that when we're asking ourselves questions like, should I go to the gym today? Should I have a smoothie today? 
we are more likely to end up on the wrong side of that answer. So the fact that you have this routine and you just own it and you stick to it, you're not lost in that decision-making process at all. You get up, you do your water thing, your run thing, your smoothie making thing, kids off to school thing, boom, done. You never had to wonder. The, the people who are at least at risk of, of missing their routine in the morning are firstborns. They, they know what they got to do as a middle child. Mm -hmm. I want to bail on everything last minute because something else looks more fun in the moment. So it's like, it, it's a way to keep myself on track. I need, I need the plan because as mm -hmm. a middle child, I'll just get off track really easily if I'm not careful. <laughs> yeah. So that's interesting. So as a middle child, do you feel like you kind of pull some things that you need from the oldest child lifestyle and yes. the youngest child lifestyle. Totally. Yeah. And it's a lifestyle. Yeah. Like as you grow older, you kind of grow out of the, you know, you, you evolve and you, um, hopefully. <laughs> and you feel it, you know, you, you max out your strengths, you fill in yeah. your weaknesses, hopefully. Yeah. If you don't, um, <laughs> but that's totally it for me. Like I've never been the most disciplined person. So I, I learned that as a, as a young adult. And, um, thankfully I was able to, like build in some discipline into my life because I knew that would be good for me and I needed it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I'm always stealing from firstborns and youngest all the time. Yeah. So I like the takeaways there. Keep your decisions few or none and stick with the same routine. If it's working for you, we don't, yeah, we don't need like fancy, shiny new things like, Hey, just basic is good. Check those boxes, get it done. Um, okay. So we got your morning routine. You have a lot that you're juggling as we talked about. How do you ensure that you get the most important things done in a day? And I'm not talking about um, things that are not work related. So obviously like you explained, the family is at the center of your bullseye, but outside of that, where you have your work and these other ventures that you have going on, how do you make sure that you get the most important things done first? Um, well, I try to plan out two weeks at a time. Um, you know, you've got big things planned way out in the future. You have to have things scheduled, but I try to take two weeks at a time and know what my priorities are. Like, what are my deadlines for things? You know, if I'm working on mm -hmm. a sponsored video for a brand with my social media, I know when my next big deadline is, and then I'm going to work backwards, but everything else with my family and my kids activities and my work, everything else is already filled in. So I can, I can kind of work backwards, you know, mm -hmm. like, okay, I've got that time free. I'm going to do it in that window. That's my only shot. Um, yeah. So it's not rocket science, but I, I guess I just try to know when my deadlines are and work backwards. And I'm, I'm not going to be one who schedules over a family thing or, you know, I don't, I, I've been a big proponent of like, I don't want to miss my kids growing up. I don't want to miss their, uh, when my firstborn was going to graduate preschool and I didn't, did you have gr preschool graduation? I didn't have that. Uh, not personally, but my children did. Apparently there's a celebration for everything now. Everything like the yeah. cap and gown and everything. Like when I was in preschool, they're like, all right, go to kindergarten. You're, you're good. Um, or maybe, when, I, you know what? Now I'm starting to feel bad. Maybe I did. And I don't remember it. And my parents were there and it, and they thought that it was going to matter to me. And if that's true, <laughs> mom and dad, thank you for your support. Okay. Go on. Thank you. Thank you, mom and dad. I'll take that certificate. We're going to hang on the wall. <laughs> Right next to my high school diploma. Um, yeah, that, mm -hmm. That's but when Teddy, our firstborn, was about to graduate preschool, I was going to go and with my wife and, and see the celebration. They get to do a little song and dance and we take a picture after and that's it. It's like a 20-minute thing. Well, mm -hmm. for my full-time job, I had a meeting during that time. And my plan was to, to skip that meeting. But as it got closer to that date, I started to feel a pull, like, oh, I should be at that meeting. And mm -hmm. I, the morning of, my plan was to go to that meeting. But I had just this little gut, like, dude, don't miss the moments, you know? And with, I knew about what the middle of my bullseye was. 
Uh, and I knew that, you know, in five years, I wouldn't remember what we met about, but I would remember going to my kid's mm -hmm. preschool graduation is, uh, you know, as silly as that might sound. Um, so I decided to bail on the meeting and I went to the preschool graduation and that was kind of like a marked moment for me mm -hmm. because I was so grateful, um, that I did that. And from there on out, I kind of made, I had a stake in the ground. Like, I'm not going to miss the moments for, mm. you know, a meeting if I don't have to. And obviously you need to balance work life. Um, but that was kind of a marked moment for me. The next day I was at work. And an older dad came up to me and he had no idea what I, that I went to my kid's preschool, but he just started telling me about how he misses his kids being young. And oh. specifically he talked about my kid was graduating kindergarten and I decided to not go to his graduation. And I regret it to this day. And I didn't even wow. tell him like what I did the day before. Um, so that was kind of the confirmation for me as, you know, as a yeah. parent, as a dad, who's got all these things going on. I don't want to miss those things. Um, so I just think it's so important. I tell younger parents all the time, you really got to prioritize and do your best to balance both worlds. But at the end of the day, push comes to shove. Mm. Do your best to not miss those most important things that on the calendar might not look like they're most important, but they really are. Gotcha. So what you're saying is work off of those things first. Find your blocks of time around those most important things. Yeah. And it's going to be different for everyone. Maybe if you're starting a business, mm -hmm. you know, your bullseye is going to shift a little bit and you're going to have to, you're going to have to put in the time and the effort. So it's not always like, well, I'll just skip the meeting, go to the kid thing. That's not what it's always going to look like, but it's mm -hmm. just knowing, knowing what's most important and, and then work backwards. Just like you said. Yeah. Just like you said. Just like we said. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I had my blue Yeti so that we could cheers, but Clink. I don't. <laughs> yes. Oh, goodness. All right. Let's move from this segment into another one called This or That. So I'm going to pose two options, and I would like you to tell me which one you tend toward of the two. Love it. All right. Here we go. Read a book or listen to a playlist. Listen to a playlist. I am who I am, or I am always evolving. I am always evolving. All right. Go on an adventure or stay in and relax. Ironically, stay in and relax. Hey. Okay. I was surprised there. Okay. Uh, Rewatch favorites or search for a new show. Rewatch favorites. I when I when I'm scrolling through Netflix looking for something new, I always end up with my safety blanket. Just back to the show that I love and adore. That's me. Which is it's anything from Seinfeld to The Office to comedians and cars getting coffee. I mean, I just can't. You can't go wrong. Yeah, especially if <laughs> yeah. you need a little levity and you're just like, I'm trying to laugh here. My day but, was hard. Just go to <laughs> go back to what you know. Again, maybe ironic as a middle child, but that's what I do. Got it. Okay. The more the merrier or more fun with fewer? Uh, more fun with fewer. Yeah. All right. Here for humor or please be serious? Here for humor. Absolutely. Yeah. We knew that was coming. All right. Cool. <laughs> All right. Third segment, rapid fire. I'm going to ask you some questions, short answers, if I ask any and you're like, I don't know, I don't have a great answer for that. We can pass or not. Maybe you'll, have, maybe you'll have great answers for all of them. I am so nervous. Ready <laughs> and go. Okay. Something you've watched lately that you enjoyed. Um, About Time, the movie. Now, this is not a new movie. Not a new movie. Right? Not a new movie, but it it's a life changer. In a, It's a paradigm shifter is a better way to say it. Hmm. Why? Say more. It makes you, but here's what we're talking about. We're talking about how you spend your time. Yeah. It's a movie that, that makes you realize you might be spending your time in a way that you wish you weren't down the road. Ooh, that's heavy. Hmm. Yeah. 
this is too serious. Let's, let's have some more fun. What's the next question? No, 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 no. I like, I like it though. <laughs> I like that. And I think it actually is very on brand for the show because this is what, this is what we're trying to do, right? Like we're all kind of recognizing that we would like to do a little bit better in the way that we manage our time. So, Hey, like maybe watching that movie could spur that feeling in, in more of us. So where can we find it? Do you happen to remember? Is it on? Uh, I, I'm pretty sure it's on Netflix. Cool. Um, Rachel McAdams is one of the stars. Can't go wrong. She's Can't great. Can't go wrong with sweet old Rachel McAdams. Just very <laughs> endearing, old. a very in- endearing human being. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay. We like it. All right. What about something you've read lately? Any books that you might recommend? Oh my goodness. One of my favorite leadership, probably my favorite leadership book, and also as a huge Disney fan, um, Bob Iger, the former CEO, wrote a book called The Ride of a Lifetime. And he walks through mm-hmm. um, his experience through his career, but he talks a lot about the creative process. He talks about what he learned along the way through the hard times and the good times. Really fascinating stuff. Love it. Not much I like more than a great book recommendation. So I'll add that to the list. Very cool. All right. Do you have a hobby or interest that you are spending time on these days? Um, I like that question. Um, not really. I don't have a ton of time for hobbies. What? That's the thing. Like my hobby turned into a a, a job with social media. Like that, I would have said. Like making yeah, actually, videos that's a, fair is point. a hobby. Yeah. Um, no, these days my hobbies look like playing checkers with my kids or, uh, coloring and coloring books. That's, but, Oh, I'll add this. You know what I love? I love to play wiffle ball. There is nothing more fun to me than playing a game of wiffle ball in the neighborhood. Yeah. That's classic. So classic. Just old time. Well, very old timey. I feel like you got cracker jacks, (laughs) wiffle ball. (laughs) Just an old soul. Yeah. All right. Can you tell us about a favorite thing? Maybe it's an app, a product, just something that you've been using and would recommend to a friend. Um, yeah, probably. I don't know. Um, I think I would, something I find very useful. Yeah. Is Spotify playlist. Uh, uh, Spotify and yeah, I, we, kind of a weird answer, but, um, no, Spotify is the jam. Yes. I use, I use music very intentionally to help me focus. Like when I need to focus, um, mm-hmm. sometimes like after we put the kids to bed, I'll go for a walk around the neighborhood with something that's just like relaxing and helps me kind of exhale from the day Yeah, um, in the morning. Like when I'm making the protein shake and when the kid, like I've got a different, like kind of easy, you know, I don't know. I just use music really intentionally. So that's, is that a weird answer that I would say that? (laughs) No, not at all. Because I think sometimes when we, we think something is very well known and Spotify surely is, it doesn't mean everybody's tried it. So, you know, if you're still out there clunking around with CDs (laughs) in your car, whatever, like it's time to give Spotify a try give it a shot. And I never thought I'd pay monthly for the premium, but I am fully in and it might be my favorite subscription that I have. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm really there with you. We, we do the premium as well. And it's, it's, it's much more immersive. You don't have those moments of what is this random ad? I mean, getting to play what you want when you want it. How can you argue with that? But I'm not, I'm not, I'm also not, I've got some friends who are really into gadgets and like different things to make their life easier. I'm just, I've never fully gotten into that. I don't love a lot of clutter, like accumulating a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, so that's even a tricky question for me. Like, what are you using? I don't know. I I'm kind of a late adopter to a lot of things too. Mm. Um, you know, we don't have a toaster yet. We're still kind of deciding if we want a toaster. In oh our house. yes. No, that would that, be a very late adoption. That is a joke. If, yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. So what's something that people would be surprised to learn about you? Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm a really sentimental person, um, as aloof as sometimes I, I appear to people or as like dry as I appear to people sometimes. Um, I don't know. I'm, I, maybe it's just this season of, of life where, 
things are going well and our kids are at a kind of a nice age. Um, we're kind of out of the diaper stages, but we're not into the teen years yet. Mm. Um, I, yeah, I don't think, I don't, I think there's a lot of dads out there who are really sentimental mm. kind of underneath the surface. You don't, they're not going to show it, but yeah, I, I would say I've, I'm a softie when it comes to, uh, being a dad. Uh, what else? I don't know. Probably nothing. I'm very, uh, particular about certain things, which is so weird. Like if, if this is, this is going to be nuts, but if, if Melissa folds a hand towel and puts it in, in the closet and it's not just perfect, oh. I will take it out and refold it and do it myself. I just love to, I love a perfect towel fold. And you oh, know what? Yeah. It's the one thing that you can fold perfectly. It's a rectangle. Mm. The corners match up. Yeah. You have no idea how to respond to this. Well, it's <laughs> fair. It, hey, listen, if you can, if if you can, then perhaps you should. I mean, listen, the first thing I think of when I think about what, what you really can't fold well is the classic fitted sheet scenario. So... Yeah. And frankly, I just agree. Like, I just, I hear what you're saying. I'm, I'm um, really into folding myself. I spend <laughs> a lot of time folding. I'm not surprised by that. Hey, we, you know what I forgot to mention yeah. back to a previous question. You and I share a passion around something. We What's share that? a passion around a lot of things, but uh, when you asked me, like when it comes to a TV show, new or old, yeah, yeah, you and I both rank this TV show is number one of all time. The wonder years. Yeah. It tell us a, we're wrong. Come at us. Tell us we're wrong. And <laughs> have you tried the new Wonder Years? It's not the same. You're not going to get the same feelings, but it's really great. They do it well. Have you seen it yet? No. And I know I told you that I was going to, and it is in my intention. There's, um, I got a little sidetracked because Dan and I have been watching the new Dan Brown show on Peacock called The Lost Symbol. And we are both big Dan Brown fans. So that's been kind of the show of the moment, but we're planning to circle back onto the new wonder years. It'll happen. Have to. I, um, I couldn't, I couldn't let this episode on your podcast go any further without mentioning our right. love for the wonder years. It's funny that you said that because I was really expecting you to go back to Spotify and mention John Mayer. John Mayer would be a, a close second. Of, yeah. Uh, Minor obsessions that you and I seem yeah. to share. Minor, major. <laughs> Who's to say? It's it's fine. Who's to say? <laughs> yeah, yeah. John Mayer, can you come on my show? Um, and also TJ's show if you become a parent and have something to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well said. Okay, finish this sentence. You'll never see me. You'll never see me jumping out of an airplane. Okay. Reasonable. You'll mm -hmm. never see me in the front row of a movie theater. You'll never see me. You know, what's funny. I would have told you five years ago, you will never see me drink coffee. Never. Oh, and right. now I'm drinking five cups of black coffee every single day. Heavens to Betsy, man. So yeah. you never know what you will never see me doing because I might be doing it. You'll never know. Oh yeah. It, TJ remains a mystery. Okay. So you learned what you learned today about TJ, but that is surely not all, which is why <laughs> you'll probably want to stay in touch with him. TJ, if somebody would like to stay in touch with you and see all of this awesome family friendly content, how can they find you? Where are you? Um, just search for TJ. And my last name is Therian. You're going to misspell it, so don't even bother. Just search for TJ on Instagram and TikTok, and hopefully you see my mug. And uh, that's probably the best place to find me. Um, and I can't let you close this show without me saying how amazing you are at what you do. We we first connected because you reached out about doing a video together. And we ended up doing several videos yeah. together that people really loved, and it was a blast. And then. Um, We've just been keeping touch, working on different things along the way. And you are phenomenal at, at what you do, seeing the best in people. Um, you've got great wisdom. So I am 
super excited that you have this podcast going now because you draw it out of other people and that's what a great place to do it on a podcast. That is so wonderful to hear. Thank you for sharing those words. Thank you for spending the time with me here today to be a guest on the show. It's been such a treat. And I'm and I'm so glad you made the call back to some of the videos that we made together. Hopefully there are more in the future. But yeah, you guys got to go check these out. They're on Reels. <laughs> oh, man. That's Good right. times. Great times. And we'll, more, to, more to come, I'm sure. But yeah. Thank, yeah, thank you for having me on. And uh, it's been a ton of fun. The time flew by, unfortunately, wow. but we have to end. <laughs> All right. Thank you, TJ. To add levity and laughs to your daily scroll, you can follow along with TJ on Instagram and TikTok with his handle at TJ underscore Therian. T-H-E-R-R-I-E-N. You can also find the links to his social media and podcast in the show notes. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed your time with us today, please share this episode with a friend. Then subscribe, follow, leave a comment, or give a five-star review. Season one of the show will include more chats, top authors, experts, and influential personalities. We will be serving up simplified applied psychology, habit theory, and quality of life tips and tricks that you can put into action right away. Until next week, I'm Kate Hammer, and you know how to live.